Hi, I'm Maggie with Maggie'sCrochet.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to do one of my favorite simple super easy designs um, that I did during a um, crochet along one night on Facebook. So anyway, um, this just is a glass inside here from the dollar store. See that? See? And I just crocheted a cover for it and then I put a strap on it so you could hang it like um, like off a cabinet little door handle or um, somewhere in the kitchen on a cabinet uh, upper cabinet door and then you could fill it with flowers you could do this I like the white for um, summer flowers and then I would do one in cream maybe for the fall flowers you could even buy artificial flowers and stick in here. So I just think it's a great um, gift also. And super, super easy. Way easy. I love easy stuff. So you can also make adjustments for other size glasses or little vases that you pick up at the resale shop or the dollar store or whatever. So it's very inexpensive too. So basically we're going to start from the bottom and with a round of double crochet and then there's another round of double crochet and then I just did a round of single crochet and maybe if you had a smaller vase you wouldn't need to do this round um, because each of these rounds down here are increasing so you might cut that out and as long as you have a multiple of two stitches this works no matter how many stitches you end up increasing to on the bottom. So as long as you get your circle just about right on the bottom of your uh, glass and as long as it's a an even number you'll be fine when you start the rounds going up the sides. So anyway let me get started on this and you start with a slip knot. I do have another video for slip knots and the, the link for the directions will be in the bottom under the description of this video. So to start out with, you start at the bottom, you chain four, and then you join with a slip stitch in the first chain to form a ring, like that, and then like that. So now I have a ring, and then it says to chain three, and then that's going to count as my first double crochet. So I did that. And now I'm going to work 11 double crochets into the ring. And when I do this, I also hold the end of my starting chain, which I always leave very long, um, which it's probably about six inches, I would say. I leave that, I lay it against the ring, and I work over that strand and the ring and into the center. So I'm going to work 11 double crochets into the ring. And the reason why I like working over that strand is so that I can pull it tight and not have a hole in the middle. On this bottom of this vase, it's not that important, but on some designs it is important. Two, four, six, eight, ten. No. You can push these around and make more room on the ring. So I just need two more. Okay, now I'm going to join with a slip stitch to the first double crochet to form a ring. So in the instructions it said that the first chain three counts as the first double crochet. So it's in the directions it'll say join to the first double crochet. So you're supposed to assume that it's the third chain of that beginning chain three. So I'm just going to go in there, draw a loop out, and then bring that loop through the um, loop on my hook. So that's the end of round one. Now round two, you chain three and that counts as your first double and then it says to double crochet in the same stitch as joining. So we joined right here, you can see the slip stitch, so I'm going right back in there with a the double crochet 
I like using cotton yarn for these also. Maybe if I was doing like one for fall though, it would look good like maybe with a wool yarn or even acrylic. So I'm just gonna go rather fast. I'm doing two double crochets. You see that? Into each one double crochet. So I'm basically going from 12 double crochets to 24. This yarn likes to split. I'm just using a worst away cotton yarn. And my favorite tulip edamel hook. I love, love, love this. The hooks we have at maggiescrochet.com. They're great. So you see how the circle is getting bigger and it's gonna um, match the bottom of this and basically when I was designing it all I needed to do was match the bottom here and if I would have done one more round of double crochets it would have been out to here and it would have been too big so this is how you have to eyeball this so maybe on a smaller bottom this would have been enough like for this glass it's got a smaller bottom than this one and I think this 24 would have been um, big enough. But let me finish this round. Sometimes I get sidetracked. Okay, so there we have the 24. We want to make sure so it's a good idea to count every round. So I've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. Now it says to join with a slip stitch to the first double crochet, which is the top of the chain 3. And then I just draw up a loop and then I bring that through the loop on my hook. So that's joined. Then it says to just do chain one and two single crochets in the fur in the same stitch as joining, which we joined right there in the top of the chain three. So I'm going in there, I'm drawing up a loop, and I'm drawing that through two loops of my hook to make a single crochet. Like that. Okay, then it says to single crochet in the next three double crochets. So I'm going to go one, two, three. And then you increase again with two. One, two, three. And then two. And then one, two, three. And then two. And then one, whoops. One, two, three, and then two. And then one, two, three. So basically every fourth stitch I'm increasing one so that'll give us an overall increase of um, six stitches. Then I'm going to end with three single crochets. And you can tell when you come around and your your uh, repeats don't match up then you might want to go back and see look at more closely at what you did because you might have made a mistake. But I landed up, my repeat landed up correctly. I have three single crochets and then I have a, a double there. I mean an increase there. So anyway I'm going to join with a slip stitch. So I'm going to go underneath the two 
loops of the single crochet. I'm going to yarn over, bring that through, and bring that through the loop on my hook. And there I have now 30 um, single crochets. So in the directions it says, at this point make sure your circle will fit across the bottom of the glass. If you need it smaller, omit round three. If you need it bigger, add another round of single crochet stitches and increase six single crochet stitches evenly spaced. So you could um, do that or do another, instead of the single crochet you could have done another round of double crochet, but when you do double crochets you need to increase 12. So I hope I'm not getting too complicated. So now it's time for the sides and you just chain three and that counts as a double again and you double crochet in every single one around. So just and since we're not increasing it's going to just pull up so that'll cause it to um, start making the side. So go ahead and work a double crochet all the way around and I'll be back and show you how to um, start doing this little eyelet which is very easy. I think the whole thing is very easy. But go ahead and uh, work doubles all the way around and then come back to the video. Okay so after you work all the double crochets evenly around you want to count them and make sure that you have 30 for this pattern or if you changed your bottom you want to make sure that you have an even number at this point. So anyway I'm going to count 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30 and that's how many I'm supposed to have. So at this point I need to join with a slip stitch to the first double crochet right here and then draw that through here. So that's joined, so that's the end of round four. Now we're going to do round five and on this one it's the start of the eyelet round. So all you do for the eyelet round is chain four and that's going to count as a double crochet and a chain one. So you have a chain four at the beginning and you're going to skip this double crochet and double into here and that's what makes the eyelet the open space. And then you chain one, skip one, and double in the next one like this. Chain one, skip, go into the next one. So it's the same all the way around. Oop, I forgot to skip one just won't look right if you don't skip one. It won't even turn out right either. Okay, see how it's starting to make the open spaces? Okay, because I had 30 double crochets, I'm going to have 15 spaces because I'm skipping every other one. Okay, so when I get back to the other side, I, I'm left with one that I need to skip. I ignore this because this is where I joined, so that's not really a stitch. So, and then it says slip stitch in first double crochet. So in the beginning of this round it said chain four counts as first double crochet and chain one. So that means that I need to slip stitch in the third chain of that beginning chain four right here. And sometimes directions say it like that. So now the repeat round that goes all the way up the side of your glass is the same thing except I'm going to chain four and instead of skipping a stitch, I'm just going to skip the chain one space and go into the double. Like that. So I'm just going to go all the way around. You've got to make sure you chain one in between your doubles. 
like that. So that's way easy. This is a great beginner project. So just like that. And now I'm going to do, I'm going to go up the side off camera and then I'll come back on to do the top part. But I need to show you something here. When I put this on here, because this is cotton yarn, it stretches a lot. But yarn in general does stretch too. So when this gets, uh, when this, my vase cover has um, water in it and then the flowers, I think that this is actually up a little bit too high because I didn't allow for um, the stretching. So in hindsight, I would have rather stopped uh, without this last eyelet round and then I would have went to the solid round after that. So keep that in mind. You don't want to go all the way up to the very top with your eyelet round. You want it to be maybe at least an inch down from the the top to allow for the stretching that's going to happen. So I want you, what I want you to do is continue on with this eyelet round and put it on your glass and crochet it in rounds all the way up to within about an inch and a half of the top. And then I'll come back on camera. I'm going to do mine the same way. And I'll come back on camera and show you how to do this top part in the strap. Okay, I've got the sides worked on my glass, and believe it or not, I'm going to stop mine right here, and it's actually more like um, two and a half inches from the top, because I still have this solid round of double crochet to add to it, and I pulled it up like this. If I pull it like this, I know that that's basically how much it's going to stretch, so I'm going to go ahead and stop mine right here, and... Now I'm going to show you the next round. So the next round is just chain three and then double crochet in each chain one space and double crochet around. So this beginning chain three counts as a double crochet in the double crochet. Now I need to work a double crochet in the chain one space and then a double in the double. So right here, I'm going in the chain one space. You could, you know, take your time and go in there, but I just go right into the space like this. And then into the double. So I'm in the space right here, and then in the double. So in the double, I'm going underneath the top two strands. So I'm going to go a little quick around here so I can get onto the handles. And when you subscribe to our channel, then every time we have a new video you will be notified. And we're going to be doing at least a couple new videos every single week. And I'd love to hear your comments if there's something you need help with or some kind of project you'd like to see or a stitch you'd like to learn. Let me know. I've done several videos specifically for crocheters. Okay, now I'm I'm ending with a double crochet in the chain one space and now I'm back to my beginning chain three. So I just go into those two loops right there and then a yarn over, draw that out and draw that through the loop on my hook. So I'm joined. So now I've got 30 double crochets here and the number of double crochets here should match the number of double crochets down here. So, however many you have, depending on how what the size of your vase is, you should have the same number here as and the same as up here. So now you want to chain three, one, two, three, 
and then you double crochet in the next three doubles. So you want to go in here, one, two, three. And this is the start of this handle right here. Okay, so then you just chain three turn, one, two, three, and then you double crochet in three doubles. You don't work in this one, this first one. You go in here, and then you do that. And then you double on each one. So your chain three turning chain counts as a double, so you want to go in the top of that chain three. But I am going to show you this little trick that I use, I like. So in, I'm going to chain one and turn instead of chain three turn. Chain one and turn and work my a double in the first one and ignore that beginning chain one. So I'm going to double in here like that and then double in the next three. I got to double on that top of that chain three. So now I'm going to do that again. I'm going to chain one instead of chain three. I'm going to turn. I'm going to double in my first double before we skipped it when I chain three turn. Double in the next two. And that was the double when I turned here. So instead of the chain three now, I've got an actual double crochet stitch to go into. And there's two loops. So let me show you what that does. All right, see right here was my chain three turn and there's a little bit of a hole there. But these two rows I did with a chain one turn and a double in the first double. And it makes it real even on the side so you don't have a hole. So that's the way I prefer to do mine. So anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do 30 rows of this and then I'll come back on camera and show you how to um, sew it onto the other side and we're almost done. I have completed the handle of the um, hanger, hanger and now I'm ready to finish off. I did 30 rows and you can see how even the rows are with that chain one turn and the double crochet in the first stitch instead of the chain three turn. So another little tip that I have for you is since this is so many rows, it was 30, I often use uh, one of these jumbo stitch markers which we have at maggiescrochet.com and I'll mark like if I count halfway to 15 or something like that, I'll just slip this into the side of the row so I don't have to keep recounting the whole thing. So anyway, that really helps a lot. So in the directions, I say to, um, at the end of row 30, to finish off leaving a 12 inch end. So I'm thinking that's about that. Like this. So what I want to do is, on the last double crochet that I have here, I'm just going to, um, this is my last double crochet, so I've just taken the two loops off the hook right here. So I'm going to chain one and then just bring that all the way out like this and that will lock that there. Okay, then I am going to thread the end of that yarn piece onto a yarn needle. And to do that, I fold it over the side of the needle and I pinch it really hard. And then I open up my pinch fingers and push the eye of the needle over the folded piece of yarn like this and then I bring it through like that. So that's how I thread my needle and this needle looks like it's gold. I'd have to get it in better light but it's the nice little needle um, that came in my hook set which the, is the um, Tulip Edamo hook that I use. So anyway, it's the first time I've used this needle but this is really pretty. Anyway, okay so right here you want to make sure that this stays even right here. And then you're going to skip 11 stitches right here. And so you count, you don't count the one that you came out of here. You count the free double crochets. So, so you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 
9, 10, 11. So you're skipping those and then you're going to match these double crochets up with the next four double crochets. So I'm skipping up to here. You could put a marker in there, but I, I'm going to start connecting the other side of the handle in this double crochet and in the next three. So my handle is even and I also might want to take this handle and instead of sewing it like this because the seam is going to show out here, I'm just going to fold this down here. I know I got to go in that stitch right there. And I'm going to come at it from this side and I'm going to go in here. So basically I've got it so I'm going to sew it together and this will go on the wrong side and then on the right side nothing will show. So here I am with the last stitch. I've skipped 11 right here and I'm going to start connecting it right here. So you might want to go through this a couple of times to secure it. And then I've got that one secured. Then I match this double crochet up with the next one. And I'm just going through both loops here. Right there. I'm going through these two and that two. I mean these two and those two. And then this is the last one. I'm going through this and those over there like that. So then I'm going to pull this so that these kind of straighten out right here. And I'm going to flip it over to the other side and see you don't see anything on the other side. So then I'm going to go over this a couple of times. And I might even want to go into the other stitch a little bit. See where this stitch is coming out of the previous stitch. I'm going to go right through because it's kind of bulky in there. And so it seems like a little secure place to go. And the other thing I could do is when I go through, I could wrap this around so it kind of locks it a little bit. And I'm going to do, I'm going to go through there about three or four times. Okay, so that's enough there. Now I need to get rid of this end. So I'm going to go on the wrong side of that last double crochet round that I did and just weave this back in on the back side. So I just came out here and I'm going to go behind it just a little bit and then back out about a half inch. I'm going to try to go through the thickest part of the double crochets and then I'm going to go behind that and then back out again. These ends usually don't come out but the bad part is is that when you need them to come out when you make a mistake I can't find my ends too good. So then I'm going to cut this end and to do that I'm going to lay my scissors flat and cut. I lay them flat so I don't cut into my stitches. So now I have a new flower thing. This is great if you have a garden because I whipped one of these up for my daughter. I was going to visit her and I thought well I'm going to make her a little planner so I can take on my cut flowers to her. So I made one for her and brought it to her. So anyway, that's how you make the um, cute little, I call it the glass cozy f uh, flower vase. So like that. So then you put your beautiful flowers in there and it's a great gift for somebody or just for yourself. Like cut some flowers and ha I cut flowers as much as I possibly can. I'm always out in my garden cutting flowers and bringing them into my home or my office. I love being surrounded by flowers. It's nice. So anyway, this is a great, great beginner project and the hook that you saw me use is available at maggiescrochet.com and the stitch markers. A link to the pattern will be below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel because every time we have cool, neat videos like this, you'll be notified and I'll give you something fun to look forward to in your crochet adventures. Thank you very much for watching.